I want to talk to you about something that came up in our group coaching program this week, and I thought it would be really great to bring to all y'all's attention too. And that is the concept of what we do when we are parenting kids who have special challenges, kind of above and beyond what typical kids are facing. And the topic got brought up in group because one of um, our moms was talking about how she has a kiddo with ADHD who's a fifth grader, and he just cannot seem to comply with the family rule that screens are for kids who have finished their schoolwork because he keeps forgetting if he even has schoolwork, he forgets if he's done it, he forgets to check if he's done it, all of that stuff. And she was in this place of feeling super sorry for him and saying, like, I think I just need to like step in and do this for him because he can't do it. And I feel really bad for him. And it really turned into this whole conversation about kids in all types of situations where we feel sorry for them. And then we might accidentally be resorting to not great parenting. So it doesn't have to be ADHD. It doesn't even have to be something about being neuroatypical. We could be talking about kids with uh, diabetes. We could talk, be talking about kids who have like untraditional um, family scenarios. Like I go through this exercise with my clients who are going through separation and how guilty and sad and they feel for their kids. And then what kind of parenting comes from that. And it reminded me of my own ex exploration of this concept with my second son, River, who has extreme health concerns around allergies. And when he was younger, he was allergic to like so many foods, plus pollen and dust and mold and grass and leaves and dogs and cats, <laughs> the universe. And this kiddo couldn't go to a birthday party and eat the cake. He couldn't have hot lunch at school. He couldn't play soccer with his friends. He couldn't go to a play date without an EpiPen. And he was in and out of hospitals because of his, um, super infections and asthma attacks and things like that. And I felt super bad for him, obviously. And I really tied myself in knots trying to kind of make it up to him. I want, really wanted to keep him from being sad. And I wanted to kind of just like cheer him up and make up for the fact that his life was so hard. And I found myself, you know, buying all the treats that I could find that he could eat or um, signing him up for any activity, no matter how expensive it was, if he could do it, or letting him off the hook when he would break rules or be rude. And pretty soon I had a kid who was eating twice as much sugar, costing me twice as much money and being twice as poorly behaved as all the other kids in our family. And he was still so sad and so miserable. And until I started approaching parenting with him differently, I thought he was sad and miserable because of his condition, not because of his actual like kind of the way that I was responding to him but once I turned it around his his behavior completely turned around his energy turned around his mood turned around and I realized like the reason why he was sad before was because I had set up his entire life as a consolation prize. No wonder he was feeling shortchanged and stuck and hopeless who wouldn't feel that way when their whole life is presented to them as like a, you know, second best. <laughs> um, but once I started realizing this one fundamental thing, everything turned around. And it is this, when we pity children, we make them pitiful. We wind up judging them. Pitying someone is a judgment. And once we judge somebody, we put ourselves completely separate from them. They're other from us. We're us and they're sad. <laughs> they're pitiful. We feel sorry for them. We are separate from them. And that means that we can feel sympathy for them, but we can't feel empathy anymore because they're apart from us. And that is so sad because all children, but especially children with extra challenges, need to have togetherness to go through that. They need an ally, not somebody up on high fixing all their problems, someone walking alongside them while they figure out how to fix their own problems. When we ally ourselves with our children, all of a sudden we can challenge them and also walk them walk alongside them while they go through that challenge. We can be with them while they struggle. And what comes from that is a child who has what it takes, who has equipped themselves with the skills they need to navigate the world as a person with XYZ challenge, as a person with diabetes, or as a person with allergies, as a person with ADHD. And that's the true job of a parent. So pitying our children keeps us in a totally different place from, from what they actually need us to be in.
If you were to take nothing else from this video, I want you to take this message. Pitying our children makes them pitiful. And your child is not pitiful, no matter what the cards have stacked against him. I promise. So this is the message I have for you today. And if this kind of conversation is interesting to you, if you want to go deeper with this work, if you want to be in the group with us, when you be there while we're talking about this stuff, I want that too. The group is open. We are ready to welcome you with open arms and you will get exactly what you need to level up your parenting. An incredible self-paced course, amazing weekly live coaching, and an awesome community of emotional safety that is just waiting to love on you and normalize whatever craziness you think you're going through. We are here for you. The link is in the description of this video. We cannot wait to meet you, and I will talk to you again next week. Bye, everybody.